In this video, we'll have a look at the basics of setting up keyframes to create object motion in Maya. Let's start by creating a surface. I'm just going to create a simple NURBS sphere and drop it into the middle of the environment here and turn on a little bit of shading. And let's open up our attribute editor so we can see some of the options. Actually, let's go over to the uh, channel box because it takes up a little bit less space. So here you can see the different basic scaling, rotation, and position attributes for this sphere. So if I take this and move it over, you can see that the translate X is changing. Now, since this is a field here, you can actually add keyframes to it. So there are a few ways to add keyframes inside of Maya, and we'll look at the most basic ways here initially. So if I move this sphere to the left, and I want it to move from the left to the right, I can move it to where I want it to initially start, and press the S key and that will set a key. And you can see that all of these attributes have now gone red, which means that there is a key set there. And then if we look down here at the animation timeline, you can see that there is a red line that has uh, been placed there, and that indicates that there is a key at that frame. And now I can drag my timeline down. We'll just go to frame 24, and then I will drag this position over. And if I want to set a key here, I can just press S. If I don't set a key, as soon as I move the timeline again, it's going to jump back because it will go back to the last key that I made, in this case, the key at frame number one. So let's go down to frame 24, move the object over, and press the S key. And there you go. When I scrub the timeline, you can see that the in-between frames were added, including a relatively subtle ease in and ease out as the ball starts to move, reaches full speed, and then slows back down to stop. So that's the simplest way of creating keys here. Now let's back up, undo back to where I hadn't set any keyframes. And I can also keyframe my position, rotation, and scale individually. I can do that either by going to Animate, Set Transform Keys, let's just tear that off right now. And I could click on any one of these to set the keys just for the transform. So if I click on Translate, you can see now I get red highlights under Translate X, Y, and Z. Now if I move down the timeline and change my position and click on Translate again, it will save the translation for that value. But notice that the rotation and scale and visibility, along with all the other attributes, have not had keys set to them. I could also do this by pressing Shift and then the corresponding transform keys. So W for move, E for rotate, R for scale. So if I go back here, press Shift E, that will key the rotation, and drag down to the end, press E to rotate it, and let's rotate it around, and then press Shift E again, that will now key the rotation. So you can see the ball start to spin. Although it's relatively hard to read in that direction, so let's rotate it around this way a little bit too. And press Shift E again. And there you go, now you can see the ball rotate as it moves left to right. And then the same thing can be done for scale. Shift R, scrub to a new point, scale tool, scale it, Shift R, and now I've got all three of these acting independently. Now this is important because sometimes you don't want all of your keys to line up specifically on top of each other. So let's actually back up here to before I had set any of my rotation keys. And let's say that I want the ball to actually rotate by the time it hits right here. So let's go back to here and press Shift E to set a rotation key. And then I want it to rotate by the time it hits frame 20. So let's rotate it around, Shift E again, and now it will rotate and then it will actually stop for the last couple of frames. Likewise with scale, let's go ahead and set a scale key and then let's go to the middle and scale it up. And again set a scale key and let's go down just here in between and set another scale key. So now all of my keys are there, but they're not 
all keyed at the exact same time. When you have things layered on top of each other and all of your keys happening at the exact same time, it tends to remove a lot of the organic nature of an animation. So the motion starts to appear more mechanical and very predictable. And that will detract from the actual animation that you create. So setting up your keys this way can really help you to get a better handle on your animation and make things happen when they need to happen and not everything happened at the exact same time. Now let's uh, back up again. We can go all the way back here. There we go, to have no keys set. And beyond setting keys this way, I can also key any individual attribute all by itself. So let's say then, for example, I want to take this ball, have it move left to right, but then have the other translate keys move independently. So the X moves independently from the Y or the Z. So let's go ahead and move the ball where I want it. And I can right click and then key selected. So I've just keyed that attribute. And now if I scrub down and I pull this over to a different position, you can right click again, key selected. And now I've keyed that translate, but, and you can see that it's gone red when I deselect the frame but I haven't set keys for my Translate Y or my Translate Z. So again, just like the other area, I can right click here, key the selected, move down to an earlier frame, or a later frame it could be too, right click, key selected, and there you go. So now it moves up, but then it stops before it reaches its end point to the right. So keying like this will give you just another layer of control over how you set up your keyframes. One additional fact is that you can take any keyframe data that you have and you can translate it to another point on the timeline. So if, for example, I, let's set our, let's go to this point here, and let's say at this point I have my object at a certain scale here. Let's, or let's leave the scale right at one. Okay, and then let's move it down here and scale it up. And now I'm going to go ahead and shift R to set just the keyframe on my scale. And let's say that I want to take now this keyframe data here. It's all at 1, 1, 1, but let's just say I have something a little bit more specific that I want to take. And I want this exact same data to happen back down here at frame 22. Well, if you grab the current keyframe and middle mouse drag it down, you can see that nothing is actually animating even though I'm changing the position on the timeline. So now if I move down to here, press shift R to keyframe that again. It's keeping those values, but again, as soon as I let go of the middle mouse button and drag with the left mouse button, it will snap to the current position. And now you can see that it's taken that keyframe value at eight. It's the same at 22, but then it's gotten everything else animating the same. You can do that with individual frames. You can do that with individual translate, rotate, or scale options. You can do that with individual channels, or you can do that on mass to everything. So if you wanted to set a key to everything in the scene, you could take that exact keyframe, drag down to another frame, set the key again, and that way you can duplicate your keys across the timeline. That can make it much quicker to return to points where you are going to frequently see in an animation. So add all those things together and you have a quick intro to keyframing and setting up simple animation inside of Maya.